So up to the point that we're at in the game, we've gone through the, uh, the first gate, which was just tap the gate, it opens up, we get to the next place, which is the front door. Once we get into the front door, um, the front door doesn't do anything. This is one of these elements that is interactive, but doesn't really do anything. So you could do some fun things to misdirect people. So the main thing is that you have to drag and drop that rock or pipe or branch or whatever and, and hit the, the window to get in. Now, obviously, ex extrapolating, uh, what if there's a gate that is locked and then there's a key on the floor? Pick up the key, touch it to the door, it opens. Well, what if you have a key below the rock? Remember, you've got layers. So what if you put a key onto its own layer, and above that you have a layer for the rock, and both the rock and the key are movable, so the person would have to move the rock out of the way, um, then they would see a key there, and then they can pick up the key and touch the door to open the door. So extrapolating from what we do here is hopefully something that you think about doing, recovering a basic aspect of things, even though if you've never programmed this seems so hard and I hate the code. This, all that we're doing is basic stuff. Hopefully you think about adding one more step beyond things, um, if, uh, if you can. Next up, after we get past this window that we break, we get into the hall. So we, this is where we ended. We're going to do another example of interacting with the environment that doesn't really then result in anything. Um, at the very least, I'm going to do that the painting is interactive. Um, and uh, if you want, you can do something with the carpet, make the carpet flip over or something, and maybe have a secret passageway down there to another part of the, uh, of the, of the house that, that you can do. So the idea will be, I'm going to tap the painting. It's going to react in terms of it's going to wiggle or move or whatever. A person might then click it again. Um, but the difference will be after they move it two or three times, then it'll fall. It won't fall the first time. So here we'll talk about adding um, conditional statements on the condition of moving it once, nothing happens. On the condition of moving it twice, then something happens. So you'll be able to do some of that. So first, I'm going to select that painting, that object, to move it to its own layer. I'm going to cut that, make a new layer, paste in place. Call that new layer painting. So I'm going to need something in the environment that is that I'm going to interact with on its own layer painting. That object needs to be turned into a symbol. So F8, MC painting. So that drawing, um, which is not interactive yet, becomes a symbol, a movie clip, so that then we can interact with it. It needs then an instance name, painting underscore MC. So once it's a symbol, instance name, painting underscore MC. So the drawing has become an object, the object has an instance name, we can then write uh, an event listener to interact. The painting will have an animation of it wiggling, just like <coughs> the door did but it'll also keep track of how many times has it been tapped or interacted with. Once you reach X number that we have in mind, then it falls. So this will be a different sort of thing to add to the game where people are exploring and thinking, what else can I do here? Can I touch this? It moves. Um, this environment changes. In our actions panel, we're going to write some code so that that object is interactive. Painting, do it this way. P 
painting underscore MC dot add event listener. So as usual, there's some object with an event listener. Once we tap the object, play a, run a function, the function does various things. We have a touch event dot touch tap, comma, run a function, fn painting fall. This painting will fall. So we will devise a function in a moment um, to make something happen. And a function, again, is just a grouping of code, a code block. But we've seen this syntax before. This is not new. Uh, hopefully, as you practice this, you, you get better at, mis at catching your mistakes. Um, as a beginning programmer, that's just one of the things that happens. You're not going to memorize it right away. That's fine. You might have to practice it and write it over and over and over, and then it'll click. You'll memorize it. If Even if you don't memorize it, well, what if I go back to a previous scene where I know that it worked? I know that it clicked the door, and I know it reacted. How was that code again? So go back to the previous scene, see how it previously worked, and then check yours back and forth. Oh, I misspelled listener. Oh, I forgot the dot. I put a comma. So even if you don't have this stuff memorized right away, go back to previous code that worked to compare uh, to then take the next step. So if I have this, where I'm saying, um, tap the painting, run a function, what's my next line of code here, logically? Yes. Function, mm -hmm. and then painting mm -hmm. void, uh, double colon, void. Parentheses, double colon, or just colon, void, yep curly braces. Quick note here, ending of fn painting fall. And then the part that we always forget here in the parentheses, this function runs when there is an event related to touch event. So event, touch event. This is the part, because I, I kind of write the whole thing and then come back to fill that in. I do notice consistently people forget to write it in. So I will pause here to, to add it. We've done this several times. So if you keep getting this error, well, eventually it'll click that between the parentheses. So this is incomplete. I'm going to get an error. I have to have a parameter here. This function only works at the moment that we that is related to an event listener of touch. So don't forget that part, event, colon, touch event, colon, void. And for the moment, we will just have a trace command, which will put a message down at the bottom. We'll say, tapping the painting. So the actual functionality of, let's move it two or three times, then it breaks, that's coming. But I want to just at least here confirm that when I touch the painting, it does detect it, that I'm tapping the painting. Because compared to the current frame, or the current scene, remember back on the door, we filled in color on some of these things that are clickable, we, I haven't done it with the painting. So technically, if I'm trying to tap the painting and my finger touches the part right here, it's empty. It's not a hot spot. So a, a person's going to tap it right there, and then nothing's going to happen. We need to fill in the colors of that object so that they're not transparent, so that they have more of an area to be clicked on. So that's simply for me to do this simply is if I double click the object, I'm just going to fill in some colors. And for the purposes of just um, completing the concept, I'm going to just drop a red color 
in all of the areas where I do want it to be clickable. Now notice, it's not clickable up where the um, string or the twine is holding the painting up. So if a person taps right there, nothing will happen. Maybe I want to make it easier for them and have that area also a spot that they can click on. So I don't want to make it difficult on the user that they're tapping on the painting, but their finger just happens to be tapping two pixels too high and they tap where it's empty and nothing happens. So I'm also filling in the color of the of the painting. If I'm doing this, if you're doing this for your own game, you'll just have to figure out if I put this in front of a brick wall, I want to fill in that color, the same color as the brick wall, so that it looks like it's transparent. But if I don't have any color there, there is the danger that the user clicks right there and there's no reaction because it's empty. I'll press the back arrow to go back over here. So now that object for the current testing phase is designed as it turned into a symbol, has an instance name, has all of the areas defined where you can click on it. We have the event listener that is in effect when we um, tap on it. Go ahead and save it and run it or debug it just to confirm you don't get any errors. Uh, try to get up to this part of the room and, and tap the painting and just see on the debug console at the bottom the message tapping the painting. Once we confirm that, we will then add the actual movement of the painting and then the keeping track of how many clicks so that it falls. So let's confirm that part works. Hopefully you don't get any errors. Let me run it on mine. After we get past this scene, we'll, we'll go to the right hallway and we will start to add instances of um, getting to the ending scenes. So you may have noticed when you try to press the play button and if you don't hit the play button exactly at the right place it doesn't react because that's the same issue that there are spots that are transparent in your play button that are not active. So you might want to go back and fill in the uh, play button uh, sections. So front gate, nothing special here, just tap the front gate to go in. We still have to play, put music on that. Front door doesn't do anything, just bounces, move the rock put it onto the painting, uh, to the uh, window, breaks it, okay, good, and then, okay, tapping the painting, nothing happens, but if I look at the bottom there, tapping the painting, and every time I tap it, it reacts. So that's all we want to see for the moment. If I can confirm that, then we'll actually make the painting do something animation-wise. I'll stop debugging. The way this will work is similar to the door, in that we have to do stuff in the timeline of the painting. So I'm going to double click the painting to go into the timeline of the painting. And I'll add a new layer for actions. So in the timeline of the painting, double click the painting, we need a new layer, actions the stop command so that it doesn't automatically wiggle. So in the painting symbol, double click it, new layer actions, stop command.
Okay, so this will work by having a few frames here. Let's say frame 5. Um, we'll press F6. And with the free transform, I'm going to um, rotate the painting just a little bit. So free transform, um, free transform tool. I'm going to rotate it, but this little center point here, it's going to rotate from that center point. So I want it to rotate from the place where the where, where it's nailed to the wall. If I just leave it like this and I rotate it like this, well, it's rotating from that point. But logically, it's not supposed to rotate from that point because it's nailed at the top. So the point of that central little circle there, when you're in the uh, free transform tool, is to put that as your anchor point up here. So now when it rotates, it rotates from there. So the idea is, on frame 5, I have a new blank keyframe, and I'm going to rotate it a little bit over here. I'll jump over two frames, F6, and rotate it back a little to the left. Again, that anchor point up here. Rotate that a little to the left. So there's a few frames where I've got it moved around a little bit, like this. jump over two more frames, F6, and then just um, move it back again. So I'm just putting a few frames together. Uh, the very first frame, it's normal. The next frame is rotated a little to the right. Next frame, a little to the left. Next frame, kind of back to where it started. And then in the actions layer, I will need an F7 on frame 2. I'm going to have new action script code at frame 2. Then at frame 10, another F7 there. At uh, the main layer here, F5. So wherever we have a keyframe, F6, something changes. The painting looks a certain way here, then it rotates a little bit here, rotates a little here, rotates a little here. So each where we've got the black dot, it is 
in keyframe, that is, something has changed. Uh, F5, nothing changes, so the painting stays by itself for a little while. Um, we've got an empty keyframe here for the stop command. We'll have some command happen here as soon as it starts to rotate, and then another over here. So, the... Um, We'll do the actions in a moment. The next, uh, the next frame over here, jumping a couple frames over, F6. Now what I'm going to do is move the painting down a little bit and stretch it out a little bit and um, sort of like erase a little bit over here because the, the part of the nail that has, um, you know, it's stuck on the nail, so I'm gonna say that it kinda like broke. The nail's still up here. So let me back up here. We've got part of the animation first where it's rotating. And after we've triggered it enough times, that it falls, it's going to start to fall. You know, I'll fix in the details in a little bit. But now I'm going to start to animate it falling. So I'll move it further down. And maybe stretch it out a little bit like that some more. See that I'm starting to animate the part where it falls. We have this wiggling part first, then a fall. I will then draw it that it's on the floor broken. Here I can F6 to copy the previous frame, but actually what I'll do is I'll do an F7 with a bl brand new blank keyframe and then maybe turn on my onion skinning so that then I can draw it on the ground. Let's see, something like this. So it's starting at the top here, and then it's falling, falling, and then it breaks. So the point is, then a new frame of it on the floor, broken. Obviously I can try to animate it perfectly frame by frame, and you can do that a little later. Uh, but right now we just want to set it up so that it then falls on the ground. You can fill in the color, just so that it looks consistent. This is the detail that you can work on when you have a little more time. I'm just trying to set up the basic animation of this. So this is going to fall right there, and that's the final frame there where it's broken. Well, taking a step back, we're going to have all of these various frames of stuff happening. But based on the interaction, based on tapping it and stuff happening, that's when uh, some of these frames play. And then on that final um, actions layer, F7 right there, we're going to have some code there as well. So different code is going to trigger at different places. This is uh, a little bit more complex than what we did with that front door. In the front door, we had different frames of animation, 
in the door symbol, but they didn't play until you clicked on the door. Well, here, same sort of thing, except what we want to do is uh, we're going to play, we're going to tap the, the painting. It'll play up to this point right here and then return back to the beginning so that there is a wiggle. And it'll keep track of how many times a person has tapped it. Once it's reached, we've tapped it twice. Then it'll play um, the next frames where it actually falls and then stop right here where it's broken on the ground and that's it. That object is, is broken, it's on the floor. And then we will remove the event listener, we will remove the ability to keep tapping on it. We've tapped it enough so that it um, has been interacted and we don't need to tap on it again, we don't need to loop it anymore, it's on the ground. So in order for us to do this, we'll go back to the first frame of actions layer. We have stop so that the painting doesn't animate by itself. We'll say set counter for painting taps. Uh, we're going to uh, keep track of how many times we've tapped the painting. VAR say painting MC taps colon number equal to one. Question? Um, is that the actions on the MC painting on the first frame or is that different? It's the first frame of the painting symbol. This code, we should be writing it in the symbol, not in the main hall timeline. No, oh, yeah, but like, because uh, we added two keyframes for actions, right? Yes, it's the first, first frame. frame. Yep, okay. so if I move it right here, it is the first frame right. of uh, the actions of the painting. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right here, when you tap the painting, um, it's gonna it's gonna go a certain number of times we'll go to now frame 2 let's say increment the number of taps on the painting or just fancy way of saying add Now this is on frame two of the painting. The painting is stationary. You tap the painting. It then starts to play frame two. It reaches frame two of actions so that it can do, so that it can add. To paintings MC taps, plus plus. Plus plus means add one to it. So we saw that when we were playing the, the game, the tap frenzy, the things were running around, you tap it, you get a point. So we've got a variable which is currently set to one. Uh, when you tap on it, it adds one more. So that's um, plus plus. So now it's on two. Or actually, just to make it make a little bit more logic, actually, let's go back where we had painting taps zero. I'm not sure why it went zero or one. Either number will work, but we'll see why. Let's put this back on zero. We have not tapped the painting yet. When we get to this screen, the painting is there, and we haven't tapped it yet. So MC taps, uh, painting MC taps is set to zero. We have not tapped the painting yet. When you tap the painting, it then plays frame two, and it adds one. So we've tapped it one time. Well, the point of this is so that we can have a conditional statement. Conditional statement to check if we've tapped enough. That's an if, curly braces, else, curly braces, 
quick note and if else checking number of taps. This is the condition to check is this true or is it false. We did that when we were battling the boss on the tap frenzy if the the boss has a hit points of 10 and if we reached 10 taps the boss is dead move to the good ending or else we haven't tapped to the boss enough so nothing happens we'll have a trace message tapped painting enough it falls or trace not tapped enough nothing happens So looking at it here, again in the timeline, we get to this scene, we have it hit stop. The painting is just by itself. We have tapped it zero times. We press one time on the painting, uh, we'll get back to that event listener to make it play. It'll play starting on frame two, so it'll start to go to frame two, it'll add one. Painting taps has become one. So then it'll also check when you fill that in, have we tapped it enough? Let's say we have not tapped it enough. So the playhead will continue to play up to this point, where then it'll loop back over here, waiting for another tap. Let's say we tap it again. So it'll do this, add one more. Is this greater than two taps or whatever? Yes. So then instead we will jump from, uh, from here to the next part, where it'll continue to play the, um, the falling animation. So we get to that point right there where it's on the ground broken, we'll add a stop there so that it's broken on the ground. But this conditional statement checks on the condition of tapping it enough versus not enough. And what we're trying to do here is say painting underscore MC taps is greater than, let's do two. If we've tapped the painting uh, more than two times, it falls. Now this number here um, could be any amount when you're trying to make it work with other concepts because we're going to have what's our threshold, how many times does something need to happen before something else happens. So right here we start off with zero before the uh, when we get to the scene we have zero taps. So we tap it one time it becomes one. So then it checks is one greater than two. True or false? One is not greater than two. False. So we get to the trace part here, not enough times. Okay, so then it loops again, and then uh, one plus one becomes two. Is two greater than two? True or false? False. False. Two is equal to two. So it loops one more time, not enough taps. Then they tap it one more time. Okay, so then we have three. Is three greater than two? False. Yes, it is. Three is greater than two. So when that becomes a true, then this next part will happen here, where it jumps to the it falling and then breaking. So if it doesn't make full sense just yet, we'll, we'll get there. Because next, if we do reach the threshold, we want to say here, go to and play. Right now on frame 10 is where it'll catch it and loop back. So, uh, frame 11 will jump over that loop that we'll put in a moment. Because normally it's going to play up to this 10 and loop back. Because it hasn't tapped enough. Not enough. Not enough. It'll keep looping back. Once we've reached the threshold, okay, let's skip this loop. Go to 11. And from 11, it animates it falling. So go to and play 11, frame 11. Skip the part that we will add in a moment, 
at frame 10, we loop back here. The fancy way of saying this is this flow control, because by default, by default, our code flows top to bottom, left to right, and also in the timeline, left to right, straight ahead. But then when we alter the flow control, we jump to different points in our timeline. Let's jump to that frame 10. Let's say go to and stop frame 2. This is where we get that loop going on. Before we reach the threshold, we'll tap the painting. It'll play over here. Check the threshold. We have not reached it. Keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Get to right here. Go to and stop 2. It jumps back here. So then it pauses. Go to and stop. It stops right here. If the person taps it again, it adds one, it checks the threshold, um, and then it plays again. If you don't reach the threshold, it goes back, and it stops there. Go to and stop. Tap it again, reaches the threshold, jumps us past the 10 to 11, and keeps going. And then final 15 is a stop. We will stop the animation at this point. And what also has to happen here is the painting will no longer be clickable. If I don't then add this line of code, a person will be able to tap it again, and then suddenly the painting will return back to the wall, and it'll loop again. I don't want the painting to be, to be, to be tappable, tappable anymore. So remove event listener. So painting is no longer tappable. That might not be a word, tappable. So we don't want the painting to be able to be tapped anymore. Shouldn't that be tappable, not tappable? Tappable, tappable, tappables. Yep, it's a comment, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> tappable. Um, so to remove the tappability of it, we've got the code. Movie clip parentheses this dot root okay we're currently in the paintings timeline well we sort of need to step back to the main timeline dot the name of our painting object what do we call it again? Painting M, um, probably Painting MC, right? Uh, this is the part where I forget the names of my things too easily. So, uh, Painting MC, yep. Okay, so Painting MC dot remove event listener. We had object dot add event listener make this object pay attention to getting clicked on add event listener well now we're saying ignore this part for a moment now we're saying that painting remove the listener don't pay attention when we tap on it because I don't want to tap out on it anymore I don't want to loop the animation of it falling again it already fell but we have to have that first part movie clip this root so that it sort of gets out of the world of the timeline of the painting to the main timeline, and then it finds the painting and then remove. Well, what we're removing um, is similar to what we had before in terms that it's a touch event. Um, touch event dot touch tap, comma. Movie clip this dot root and be careful right here. We do need two parentheses because the it's not complete yet. Um, double parentheses.
parentheses, this parenthesis and the remove event listener here. And then this one ends the parenthesis of movie clip dot the name of our function, which was let me just go back and get it. Sorry, let me just get it there and FN painting fall. This is going to be a long line, so I'm going to zoom in and out. First, like this. Can't fit it all just yet. I'll scroll it in a moment. But um, we had that we had that remove event listener. Uh, specifically, taps. Uh, don't play that function anymore. So this is the opposite of what we've done over and over. Object dot add event listener. Pay attention to tapping the object, run a function. Now we're doing the opposite. Remove the listener to when we tap this object, don't run that function. That turns off the clickability of that um, painting so that it doesn't loop in a weird way. And I believe at this point that's what we need. Let me, let me run mine just to confirm no errors, and then I'll put the code back one moment. What's supposed to happen is you get to that hallway, you tap the painting once, it'll wiggle a little bit. In your output panel, you probably get a message as well, like not tapped enough. Okay, so let's see right here. So I'm going to press play. I'm going to go past the gate. I'm going to throw the rock I get here. OK, I'm going to tap the painting once. Tapping the painting. Tapping the painting. Oh, OK, one more thing, one more thing. I am tapping the painting. Forgot about this. I am tapping the painting. But none of this timeline is happening because we've got the stop at the very beginning. It's not proceeding past this. So one more thing. We go back to the hall. And our event listener in the hall right here doesn't do anything except to say, tapping the painting. So the painting, underscore mc dot play. That's the part. Whoops. Um, that's similar to when we had the door, the front door. We tap the front door so it can start to wiggle. Same thing here. The timeline of the painting is stopped on frame one, so it didn't proceed. But now when we tap the painting, now we're saying play the play the rest of the code in the timeline of the painting. Then it does all of that that we wrote, hopefully. It wiggles, it keeps track of how many wiggles. When we reach the threshold of wiggles, then it falls. Then if I tap the painting, it should no longer be interactive. So you can go back here to where we had back on the hallway, we had written the uh, tap the painting to do something, to actually play the timeline of the painting. So I, I saw that it, I saw that that was something to do because when I was debugging it, I tapped and nothing happened. But I saw the feedback that it said tapping the painting. So that reminded me, oh, I forgot to add the final little code on the event listener. OK, let's try that again. So do a play, open the gate, throw the door, uh, the rock, touch the painting once, <clears throat> wiggle down there, not tapped enough, nothing happens. Tap it again. Breaks. I tapped it enough. It falls. So two taps and it falls. If I want more or less taps, I can change that easily. Now if I tap the painting, no more reaction down there. I've turned off the event listener. It's, it's done. It's broken. Um, based on the layers and such, I could have something behind the painting. Maybe a, a secret um, safe with stuff inside of it. Um, 
this for the, all intents and purposes is all that it'll have it do. It's nothing. You tap it, it moves around. We'll put a sound effect. We'll make a, a sound effect of it breaking glass and such eventually. But that's that interaction right there. So this is an example of interacting with the environment that maybe doesn't do too much. But you see the idea when you've got the timeline of the actual object none of that happens until you interact and then we've got the code so if you wanted to take more taps we change it where we've got right here greater than two how about greater than three or ten or whatever you know, I don't want to put too many too high of a thing because people might not think a lot to, to tap too much Maybe it depends on the target audience. Like, you, you watch all these YouTube videos of people discovering, finally, everyone's discovered all the secrets of this game 10 years later, because someone's tapping every single pixel to figure it out. Uh, this is a case about, I don't know if someone's going to uh, take the time to tap it exactly 33 times before something happens. But you can easily change the number there. And it jumps to the next frames, and then it breaks. Yes. Can you go back to the last frame of the actions for the, for the symbol? Yes, the very last frame has stop any of the looping and then um, turn off the event listener. So let me see if I can zoom in a little better. We'll take a break at this point also. If it didn't work, let's check your code. It's a few different places. It's a big line right there, but that's it. So let's take a break until 2.16. In case it didn't quite work, we'll figure it out, and then we'll go on.